I happen to have my Envision decoder up here in bits just at the minute and I thought while I have it out here I may as well give you a wee look round to see how it works. So when I talk about an Envision decoder, basically that specifically means any teletext decoder that's not built into a TV. So you could say an external teletext decoder and I'm not going to go into all the reasons why that naming is the way it is right now, but yeah, that's that's the gist of it. So if we have a look inside here, um, obviously the first bit is the power supply here. This is just a standard switch mode 12 volt power supply. And you'll see that on the power input here we have a switch. Uh, and also that the earth connection also goes out through to the video connection, so everything is properly earthed. The 12 volt supply then goes through these fuses. Now I actually have two fuses um, because the original plan was for there to be two independent decoders within this one case. So there was two fuse holders and I just never removed the second one even though I never used it. So we have this fuse and then that brings the 12 volt over to the main decoder board uh, which we'll get to in a wee second. Um, and then the other connections, um, that well, the other fuse just isn't used really. Um, so we have a couple of boards over here. So the first thing is this is the main decoder board itself. And if you're thinking, yeah, that chip looks a bit dodgy. Well, basically, whenever I'm developing a circuit board like this, I usually build up a couple for myself for testing and development purposes. And usually you'll get one that doesn't work right or, you know, I fiddle about with it and, you know, there's a couple of tweaks to be made. So this is one of these ones. So you couldn't sell one that's been all tweaked about like this because it's, well, I mean, well, because of that for a start. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, so I can, but I can use them internally for my own things and it works perfectly fine for this job. So, uh, so yeah. Um, at the back here we have the composite video input that carries our teletext signal in to be decoded and our video output and that's just a normal PAL video output. Now I've not this plugged into anything because I'm only showing it working here at the minute. So, um, On the main board itself this is sort of the, the main brains of the operation. This is the main teletext decoder chip. It's controlled by this microcontroller, which is basically an Arduino Nano, just soldered directly onto the board. And this powers, or this outputs a signal to the PAL encoder chip, and that's what gives you your signal output. Um, you can see this board has the full LEDs and everything on it, the same as a standalone board. So those don't, as you can see, I've disabled them because there's no point in having them in there, but it was too much bother to actually remove them, so I've just disabled them. Um, then we have this is the serial connection. Now this runs underneath the board to this, which is an RS-485 converter board, and that is the remote control interface. So you'll have seen, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen the remote control for this. I don't have it handy here at the minute, so I'm not going to show you that, but um, it basically allows you to type in page numbers and stuff remotely over a serial connection, and that's just an RS-485 connection um, into a little D-sub connector. So that's just plugged in there, and there is space for a few other bits and pieces there, should I ever need them. Then the front panel here, this is connected solely by I squared C. So there's this one four pin connector that powers everything on the front panel. So you'll see, I'll spin it round in a second and you'll, we'll get a proper look at that. But that powers the page selector, uh, it powers these LEDs and it controls this screen. And then there's just this one power LED as well. So, well, when we're around here, we'll take a look at so. Normally with a decoder, it automatically starts up on page 100 or uh, whatever page is specified in the broadcast service data packet. And um, that's not really very useful for a decoder like this because you want it to be showing one specific page all the time. So we have this thumbwheel selector on the front that controls what page 
it automatically turns on at. So if I set this to, I think it's 458 that the, uh, um, or is it 45, yeah, 459 that the world clock page is on, and you'll see while it's searching for a page, the page find LED goes out and it just shows you what page it last decoded. Um, and as soon as it gets that page and finds it, it shows it um, along with the time here. It shows what the initial page from the broadcast service data packet is. And it also shows the status display, which at the minute is showing from my TV channel. Um, these lines along the top are some of the page attributes, so uh, control codes. So if I set this to 152 again, you'll see whenever it decodes that page, whenever a new sub page is sent, it will send the arrays page bit first. Uh, on the first transmit and then that will disappear and you can see it on subtitle pages and things as well that will uh, different different control bits will appear and disappear on there so if we just give it a wee second uh, if I keep talking on and filling pages yeah see the sub page changed and now the C4 bit is set and on the next cycle that will be cancelled again yep so it's gone now so that's what you see on the front screen, and then we just have this nice gold label, of course. So, um, the only other thing in here, really, is this here, which is sort of a test. So, you'll have this connector at the top is all your video inputs and outputs, and this is an RGB signal output, um, which goes to a SCART to HDMI converter. So that basically converts that raw HDMI high quality, or sorry, not HDMI, uh, the RGB signal to HDMI. So you don't get that PAL dot crawl and stuff on there, but you'll also see that that's not actually connected to anything. So when the cover's on this, that's completely useless. So my plan is to put a socket on the back at some point, but this was really just for testing and it's only stuck in there with double-sided tape but it, it it stays there pretty well I mean this has been in the post a couple of times like that and it has been it it's still stuck there pretty good so yeah let me just uh, unplug it and spin it around and we'll just take a quick look at the back of the front panel here okay so I spun it round now it's just so we'll we'll also take a look at the back panel here in more detail so there's your two fuses um, Fortunately enough, now this has never actually blown, so that's good, because uh, I don't know if I have any spares of these. Um, or what I should do, I don't know. I'll always just bridge it out if I'm stuck. Um, <laughs> so this is the remote control interface. So that, um, you have 5 volts and then your RS-485 twisted power on there. This is a holdover from when I planned to have two of these boards in here. So these were, were going to be the other two video inputs and outputs, but I've just covered them up with a bit of, uh, a bit of tape there, because um, there is a hole behind that. And these then are your composite video inputs and outputs. Um, I would, did think about putting an S video output here, because we do actually have provision for that on this board, or an RGB output, you know, just put a big long row of um, BNCs on here, but I I never bothered um, because really the only thing I ever use is the composite video inputs and outputs and uh, while, as you can see, I do have the possibility of HDMI in future, I haven't actually used that, so yeah. This then is the front panel, so what's really cool about this is, as I've already said, the only connection to everything on the front panel there is this four wire connection. So you've power, you've I squared C data and clock. And that's literally all that goes there. Um, you'll see that we have the LCD screen just has this wee I squared C module on the back. And then that just powers that LED directly because it's just a power LED. And then this custom board that has two I.O. expander chips on it and basically it's because this um, thumb wheel selector uses a really weird um, binary output rather than a you know rather than a 
binary coded decimal output. Um, so you'll see this one actually only needs um, five pins per digit, whereas this one needs like the full ten per digit, <laughs> which is a bit ridiculous, but that's the way it is. So there's two I.O. expanders on here, and they control that thumb wheel and also the indicators on the front there. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to this. So I'm going to go and put the lid on this and put it back in the rack and have a good day.